Black Lightning, Tuesdays at 9, 8 central on The CW. We are now in the fourth episode of Black Lightning, and things do not look like they are slowing down. I am loving the show, but let's get into the details. My name is Brennan Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. What's going on, everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in to my Black Lightning review slash recap. I really do appreciate it. This is episode number four titled Black Jesus. And before we get into the review, help your boy out by clicking that subscribe button. Also, click the bell so you can be notified when I make uploads. Give me that thumbs up. Let's see if we can get this video to 100 likes. And just one more thing. If you have a Facebook account, which I'm sure you do, and you want to get into the discussion even more besides my own recap video right here, there's a link down in the description box for the largest uh, Facebook group discussing Black Panther. They discuss non-spoilers. Spoilers It's very well organized. It's a very nice group. It has about 9,000 members and it grows and grows and grows each week. So it's the largest Facebook group online or on Facebook that discusses Black Lightning. They also have members that are actually in the show that are in this group discussing the show. So if you like cast and characters that are in the show, you can talk to them in this group. It's a lot of fun. They are posting all types of stuff. Has a ton of discussion. So go ahead and check it out. Join the group is free. And there's a link down in the description below. All right. So now we have episode four. It's called Black Jesus. And to be honest with you, I really don't know how Black Jesus ties into uh, the title of the uh, episode. I really don't get the significance. If you do know, please let me know. Uh, uh, in the comment section below and like I said or if I did not say that you know this episode is going to be spoiler filled so if you haven't seen episode number four black Jesus go watch it right now and then come back and then we can talk about it but this is another great episode I like it a lot um, I, I, one of the things that I'm just really noticing about the show I like how we get to see Jefferson Pierce Black Lightning more as a principal than the actual Black Lightning character. I mean, that's kind of like he, he wants to be a hero, but at the same time, he, he keeps that in his back pocket. You know, uh, early on in the season, you know, he was really skeptical and reticent to come out and just be the hero again because he didn't want to lose his wife. Things are getting more organized with his family, but he always tries to talk things out first, you know, as a principal or Jefferson Pierce, how he's uh, most known to everybody else. And then the Black Lightning character is um is like second tier to him but he kind of had to mix that early on in the episode because it starts out you know he's in the school walking down the hallway and there's a guy screaming his name is bernard screaming in the bathroom just going crazy because he overdosing on this green light drug or whatever and i, I like the fact that he was just real cautious like oh snap you know like i can't release my powers he kept looking over to the to the left of the door trying to make sure nobody came in and i, I mean gamby later on in the episode saying that this is like crack and pcp put together but bernard was in there for going like the incredible hulk or something picking up toilets and throwing him and uh pierce had to zap him twice or whatever with you know his powers and you know that just kind of shows how dr uh, strong the drug really is because the first one it really didn't do much to him you know he kind of like took it and just like ah you know bernard and he really had to zap him twice and i was like oh my gosh is bernard gonna come back to consciousness and is he when he gets back awake is he gonna realize that that was jefferson pierce that shocked him or, or is his memory gone so uh that was something that concerned me and it looks like you know his memory was shot and he didn't remember that so you know that's uh that that's good i like that next scene is you know i can't I mean, I, I'm, I'm liking the show a lot, but, you know, you got these dudes, these, you know, wannabe thugs, wannabe tough guys or whatever, threatening Anissa with a gun. I'm like, come on, bro. Like, what are you doing? Like, you are weak. You are frail. Like, you know, I have no respect for you. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you're you're threatening a woman with a gun. Like, and you a man. I mean, if, if you shouldn't be violent with women in the first place, calling them bitches and stuff like that. That's just not cool. But for you to have to like, uh, what are you going to do about it and pull up your shirt and show your gun? I just think that's whack. I don't I don't like that at all. Um, you know, grow up, dude. Um, you know, you should be able to hold your own, you know, and be more threatening without the gun. But, you know, I guess not. Um, also, um, you know, there's a lot of snitching in this episode. 
And we all heard the rumors and the stereotypes that, you know, snitches get stitches. And, you know, some people snitch, some people didn't want to snitch. You know, I, I find that kind of hilarious early on in the very, very beginning of the episode. That one guy, he didn't want to tell on, you know, he didn't want to snitch on anybody. But he ended up giving that guy the nickname called uh, Two Bits. Talking about, hey, this looks like a, uh, I know this sounds like a 70s old. I forgot exactly what he said, but I kind of chuckled there. His acting was a little off there, but it wasn't that big a deal to where you know it turned me off completely and we also have you know lady eve uh she is coming through i'm, I'm loving her as a villain um uh, she popped up in the last episode she's popping up again um you know it is she's really disgusting with with the uh with the body on the table you know with talking to device and she has her goons in the background as well and i'm just like man you you have no uh you have no remorse or anything like you she just like really uh jill scott she's just like really cold-blooded just you know siphoning the blood out this body and i'm just like man you know what's going on that's just like that's just nasty i mean and the guy is alive so i don't know what's going on right there but it's just really you know showing that she just really doesn't give two craps about anything she doesn't care about tobias at all it's blatantly obvious that uh he is disposable to her and um you know i, I kind of like the fact that she she was just talking all that mess and then he's just kind of like you know looking and rolling his eyes she's like hey bro you got something to say you know said he's like look i done made you millions of dollars and she's like oh you lied on your resume man you, you know you've been in the game for nine years and your reputation was built up on you know everybody thought that you killed black lightning but that's not the case so i kind of see her point um you know and I, I like her and i like tobias and i like that she is because what, what was the guy's name in the uh, lala or latavius you know he was the top of the food chain at early on but then we found out tobias was above him at the end of episode one with the harpoon and then we find out lady eve just scott is above him and then it's just like it's so much it's so many layers because she was talking about that she has partners as well so i don't think that there's anybody above lady eve i think that she just has partners and um you know i like that because it just you know it's adding layers on and it's kind of like this is a video game where black lightning jefferson pierce is just going to have to go level to level to level or whatever so he defeats you know this whole uh this whole crime syndicate of selling drugs to teenagers and children and whoever wants the drugs and just taking over the streets so you know i'm really i'm um i'm really really liking all that so um the next scene we got bernard he's in the school and they're talking about expelling him and he don't want to snitch either and i kind of like that his daddy was like no you are a snitch tell him all the information that you got to know you know that was a pretty good scene i really like at the very end of the scene and i have it written down here that hey, jefferson pierce is just such a great role model um he's such a great figure to look at on screen and he really does care about his kids because he was like you know where's the future and bernard was like right here uh whose life is this and his mind and it's like what are you going to do with it and then he replied bernard replied back like you know live it by any means necessary what are you going to do with it live it by any means necessary I mean, that's just amazing right there. Uh, this is just another example of how we need black principals, black male principals and black male teachers as much as possible or male teachers that that. But, you know, especially black um, male teachers or principals. And I think a real life statistic is under two percent of the whole country's uh, teachers are black males. And I'm not saying that it has to be 90 percent, but, you know, I think the exact figure is one point nine percent. And in my and that kind of just really. Um, really uh resonated with me because in my whole entire life i've only had one black male teacher and that was my that was either my freshman or my sophomore year in high school and he was my psychology teacher and he's the one that taught me about pavlov and the lit the dog salivating and all that good stuff and i i think i got like a b plus or a minus in that class i remember that i performed very well in that class I remember that I was looking forward to that class. I was I was having fun. It was very hands on and things like that. And, um, you know, black male teachers, they, they um, you know, they they're very powerful. And, you know, in real life and they're really putting it on the forefront of the show. And it's just something that I really like, especially with this, you know, with him asking, you know, where is the future? Whose life is this? And what are you going to do with it? I really like that. That was a very powerful scene to me. I liked it a lot. Um Unfortunately, you know, Khalil got shot in the last episode and, you know, his spine was severed. 
So he's in rehab right now, just trying to get it together. I like that Jennifer is right by his side. I mean, their relationship is new, it's fresh, but she's down for him. She likes him. She really cares about him. And I like how she checked the nurses in the hallway. Just like, hey, man, what the hell is y'all's problem? You know, my dude in here, he can hear y'all. Please keep your voice down. Please be a little bit more sensitive to his call. You know, I like all that. You know, that's what's up. I'm feeling all that. That's good stuff. You know, that's dope. I'm, I'm really liking all of that. And, um, you know, next, uh, what we have next here, uh, Khalil can't walk corner. Oh, so now Tobias, he goes into, um, he goes into the morgue or to the coroner's office and they end up beating the crap out of the corner. You know, I was counting the hits, especially the second time I watched this. They hit him eight times. I'm assuming in the head with his brass knuckles. And this just goes to show, this is another villain that they showed of uh, Tobias that happens to be a white guy. And that's perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with that. But I noticed, I remember that in the first or second episode, I think it was the second episode, La La on the table was like, man, you really do hate black people. And um, he was like, no, I just hate certain type of Negroes. And, you know, since he's albino, he's light skinned, but he doesn't have any black henchmen. He only has he has the white woman that shot the rifle in the last episode. And then you have your white guy here. I don't know if that's really just because he doesn't like white people or I, I, I don't know. But I mean, he doesn't really like black people. But I just noticed that maybe I'm looking too into it. And also something I left out in the when he was uh, talking to Lady V, Lady Eve, Jill Scott, she was talking about the old African tradition or not tradition or African beliefs that they thought uh um, uh, albinos had magical powers and so that they would grind cut up and grind up the bones and sell the dust or whatever like because i thought it was magic dust and at the end of the episode she was like not end of the episode end of that scene she was like you know either get your stuff together or i'm gonna make me some albino dust and i'm like man this lady here is just ruthless and she really is just going back she was siphoning that blood from the guy that um uh, no was not dead he was still alive so then next we have jennifer that's trying to sneak into the house um, you know, she's getting charged up by her parents. He's talking about she's wanting to quit track and things like that. And, um, you know, we have Lynn, um, Pierce's ex-wife. I hope they get remarried again. They're going back and forth, not necessarily knowing how to uh, handle the situation, you know, but I, I, I'm feeling all that. And then right after that, we have Anissa at the dinner table being kind of honest. And, you know, I like how fearless she is. I like that she's speaking up her mind. Sometimes she can, uh, you know, be a little too big for her britches and, you know, with her tone, saying some type of things that are rude. And uh, Henderson, the cop, he was just like, you know, why is it every time somebody's going to say without uh, without any offense, you know, they're about to say something offensive. I feel him there, but she is speaking her mind. But then she leaves that scene, the table, the house, and she goes and she wants to do some. Uh, oh, real quick before I say that, I like that Pierce. Uh, her father, right before she was leaving, was going to her and be like, hey, uh, Anissa, are you okay? And she was like, yeah. But he started smiling when she left. And I, I, I think that he's smiling. He gave the little smirk because he's happy that, you know, she's like, hey, she supports Black Lightning. You know what I'm saying? I got some support for my daughter. I don't have full support for my ex-wife, Lynn, yet, but maybe she will come around. And then right after that, we get to go see her kick some butt in the streets herself. I like that. You know, she's not uh, she's not obsessed with her power either. Uh, you know, she's you know, she's just not going around uh, beating people just for the hell of it or whatever. She was going back kind of paying them some payback. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, because they was talking trash earlier, calling her a bitch and stuff like that. So, you know, she had to go back and be like, I got your bitch right here. You know, I like that. That, that was dope. I, I, I really liked that a lot. Um, this scene right here next with uh, Black Lightning going to go confront 2-Bit. Again, I like it because he has Black Lightning in his black heart, in his back pocket, I mean. He wants to try to resolve things through dialogue first, and he try, he goes, he's very respectful. But 2-Bit uh, in there with his dress, he like, he's like, all right, you know, enough with the two uh, small talk. You know, less, uh, you know, why are you really here? And he was like, bro, I got a family to feed. And, you know, Black Lightning was like, all right, man, well, I'll let you go. I'll let you be. Later, he goes and talks to Gamby. Gamby was like, hey, you need to go back. And that's when Black Lightning, you know, shows back up. Nice scene. I liked that everybody was scared. Um, early on in the season, I really wasn't feeling Black Lightning just popping up out of nowhere with neon lights on his chest where everybody can see him and shoot him. But I really just think that he's just trying to lay the stamp down. It's like, hey, I'm back, y'all. If y'all want to be on that riffraff, that BS, that bull crap, you know what I'm saying? I'm back and I'm, I'm, I'm wreck, uh, you know, racking heads and, you know, get out of my way. And the tone from 2-Bit was completely different. Like, oh, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
And some people may consider this corny, but I really got to laugh. I got to kick out because it's like, man, all you're going to do is knock me out and call the cops. You know what I'm saying? I don't want no 30 years, you know, and uh, he's like, hey, bro, you should have thought about that. And I feel him there. You know what I'm saying? You should have thought about that. But he's like, all right, I'm, I'll knock you out, but I'm not going to call the cops. And dude's like, all right, I mean, you know, before we call the cops, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, can I get a picture? And he, he went over there with the phone, like, you know, like this. You said I got a Captain America background. And that, that was just kind of funny. I was like, I like this dude here. That was corny, but it was funny. You know what I'm saying? He was scared of Black Lightning, but at the same time, he was a fan of him, a fan of his. And I just thought that was kind of funny. Um, you know, that that, that, that was, that, it, it was funny to me. It just was. I, I got a, a, get a good kick out of that a good laugh and that wasn't funny you hey that's fine all things are subjective um next we got you know the board of educators are really trying to uh, power do a power move on pierce and say hey we want bernard expelled and he really just wasn't feeling that you know but the next scene is what i really like a lot is the upgrading of the tech because gamby gave him the electrical vision and so he was able to it wasn't like uh um uv not uv vision um I forgot the word, but it was like electrical vision or whatever. So he can see everything with electrical current. I like that. But right on uh, down the street, we got Anissa with her new friend slash girlfriend. Maybe we don't know yet. They really haven't been into me yet. And, you know, they was being picked on. And that just Anissa's not going around, you know, looking for fights. The fights are kind of coming to her and she whoops their butt. And I like that. And she's stomping on the ground and making earthquakes and things like that. And um, um, Black Lightning comes and he's like, hey, Gamby. Look at the security footage. But then we got Gamby lying to him. Why is Gamby lying? I don't understand. I mean, Gamby deleted the footage from the last episode. He's not telling. Um, he didn't know that there was. Uh, he didn't know that there was a Nissa. So it's not like he was trying to protect the daughter. But why is he lying? I don't understand that. What's going on, guys? If you know more than me, please uh, put it in the comment section below, uh, and you can spoil away because this is a spoiler filled video. But I was really confused by that. And, you know, Gamby coming with his little sawed off shotgun. So I'm thinking by the end of this season, Gamby is going to get some in the nitty gritty and getting some some and, and get into some action as well. And then we did see a, a, a shot of him earlier that he had a T-shirt on. and He has some muscles. So, you know, he'd be working out, too. So, you know, that's what's up. I don't know if he ever fought in the comics. If he did, let me know. And then we are now we get to meet uh, Tobias's sister. Uh, I forgot her name, um, you know, and Tobias is putting little rats and mice in the piranha cage. And that was pretty gross and disgusting um you know and one thing that really concerned me i thought black lightning was about to give his identity away because bernard's father called him like hey i don't know what to do i didn't know who to call bernard went to the drug house to get some dope i got pistol with please help and i'm so glad he i'm so glad he didn't say i'm on the way he was like i'm gonna make some calls but now Bernard knows that, hey, I guess that Black Lightning and um, and Jeff Sapirce are like this. I mean, you got them on speed dial, bro. So you got to be careful there, Pierce, that you don't give away your identity or, or lead people to believe that you're a Black Lightning. But I was thinking about that. He came in, wrecked shop, and, uh, you know, whooped everybody's butt. At first, I was like, why aren't they using guns? But this is a dope house, and you don't want to use guns and draw a bunch of attention to the dope house. But at the same time, I'm assuming the cops know that, you know, it is a dope house because Bernard's father was like, they didn't do anything, you know, when I guess he tried to report it. So I don't know. I was kind of conflicted on that. But really, the last scene is Tobias. He's using his brain. He's he's the one that's been behind giving Khalil uh, all the gifts. Unfortunately, Khalil cannot walk. His spine is completely severed. And he was the one shining with him with gifts. And uh, when uh, Tobias was talking to his sister, he was like, hey, I got these warrants or whatever. I can't go. But, you know, well, let's, you know, use some mental uh, psychology here and get uh, Khalil and people to hate Black Lightning. And that's what he wants to do. And he goes and shows up blaming uh, Black Lightning for uh, Khalil's predicament that he's in. And I really wonder what uh, Khalil is going to think here, because it was clear as day that Black Lightning saved the day in the last episode. So we'll call it one the book of burial. So I really, don't, I really, I like Khalil so far. I don't want him to come and but uh, turn into a character that I don't like. That's stupid and not using his brain. Like, yeah, Black Lightning, this is your fault. No, no, you're being manipulated and things like that. I mean, come on, man. You know, Black Lightning versus this dude, albino dude that just shows up out of nowhere. I mean, that, that don't, I don't, I don't make any sense. But we'll we'll see that he was Tobias is just seating in. Um, 
um, you know, little seeds here and there to try to, you know, make this grow into a plant of Khalil hating Black Lightning and everybody else, the whole town, the whole society. But we'll see. But I really did like this episode. This uh, season right now is four for four. I really don't have any complaints. Um, I like Anissa slowly getting her powers. I like Black Lightning and him, him engaging and him trying to use dialogue first. And um, I, I just can't wait for more, guys. I really am loving this show. It's intense. Uh, there's a lot that I like about it. And, uh, you know, I, it, it relates to me. And there's a lot that I can, um, and, you know, that I, I can relate to. And uh, remember, guys, there's a link down in the description box below for the biggest Facebook group that d talks about the show. Go ahead and click the link and uh, join the group, join the discussion. But, guys, that is just my opinion for episode number four of Black Jesus of Black Lightning. What did you think? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did it turn you on? Did it turn you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you don't, that's fine. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Click the bell so you can be notified. Go to my website. Check me out there. Bookmark it. And also look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. It's right there at the bottom of the screen. And I made it very easy by providing a link to all that good stuff down in the description box below but guys i just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review uh slash reaction slash recap of the black lightning episode number four titled black jesus and before you go don't forget that my name is brandon keith avery and that's just my opinion peace <laughs>